Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to Table Takes presented by Gen Con. My name is Christian and I'm here today with Bonsai, Emma and Derek. And we're here to talk about games. Mm -hmm. All the also, games. Uh, happy fourth. Yeah, oh, happy I, hope, I hope everybody Wait, had a happy fourth. The fifth. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm hoping you had a happy fourth. Oh. Well, yes. Hope I, you had a happy. Yeah. I made so much Cajun happy. food. I stayed inside. I, didn't I see also any fireworks. stayed inside. Yeah, no, we did, we did some, we did some real out. legit gamer stuff <laughs> no, by I, not I, leaving the house. I, I had like so much Dayquil. It was great. <laughs> I went outside. The sun hurt my eyes. Got a headache. <laughs> the full deal. Fresh air. Oh, Chris, <laughs> don't you know the outside world is dangerous? <coughs> what are you doing out there? That's crazy. Indeed it is. So we've got a lot of things to talk about today. We are going to get uh, things started off on uh, what has been our top story for the last three weeks, which Ooh. is Ooh. fun in Terrafland. Mm. Uh, Emma, why don't you bring it's us up to date on <laughs> what's happening? Terrifying. And, and it's a good thing you're the boss, huh? Otherwise, you would be <laughs> so fired right now. Oh, <laughs> All right, Emma. What's the uh, what's the story with the tariffs now? What 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 is happening? So this has so really confused. been an emotional roller coaster, right? For mm. for uh, uh, it feels like months, but it's really been more like weeks. It's really right? just yeah. been weeks, right? It's, it feels like forever, but it's it's just over the weeks. It's it's just been going down. It's like tariffs are coming. Tariffs are maybe here. Like <laughs> all of your board games are going to cost twice as much. <laughs> Everyone who's doing Kickstarter, <coughs> you're never going to get those. Uh, Mike Selleck here basically saying like board games are ruined. <laughs> like board games are over, everyone. So yeah. I hope you have just another pack, hobby. Pack it up and go home. To, pack it up and go, go home. To. Gen Con's canceled. Did you? But, oh. No, with the big deal that we've been oh. making out of oh, it. The roller coaster yeah. comes back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah. for a lot yes. of people, that's mm -hmm. what it felt like. So, mm -hmm. but we're, we're on the upswing again because apparently the tariffs are canceled now. <laughs> or Momentarily. Yeah. yeah, well, enough people did, like, as we mentioned on the show, you know, you can talk to your representatives and enough people did that. And it was, because it wasn't just board games. So a lot of the big video game console companies, mm -hmm. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, were also pushing back on this very heavily because they were going to suffer from it as well. And uh, apparently people figured out, although the president is saying like, yeah, China's going to pay for it. China's going to pay all this money. He's like, no, nope, it's going to be us. Yeah. Wait, is that the same, wait, is that the same place as China? There. Yep. Okay, all right. <laughs> that <laughs> makes sense. I think there's a lot of details there we can't really pay attention to. Uh, or plan around. Right. But. Yeah. But. But yeah, so for now, at least, they're just not happening. I think, like, we've been talking a lot about a general tightening, and we had talked about paper prices going up. Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't think this news is going to reopen the floodgates. Mm -hmm. I think just the threat of having this happen is fundamentally mm -hmm. changing what a lot of people, like, people were tightening their belts. Mm -hmm. People were looking for um, alternative places to yeah. receive like where you can come have people print miniatures where mm -hmm. you can print plastic products mm -hmm. yeah and but that still doesn't change that paper products are going to get expensive yeah that, the tariff did not affect that the paper products being expensive relates to a lot of manufacturers changing what they build to building boxes because amazon is a thing and they need a lot of boxes yeah Plus, <laughs> trees grow slower than they get cut down as oh yeah yeah out. trees yeah, yeah trees grow slow guys well, so, I mean, the important thing about the tariffs mm. is that it's not that they're canceled, done, we don't have a signed deal, like, yeah. this is this is not a done, everything is fine. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's it, we're back at yeah. talks again, we're yeah, talking we, about We it. are back to before we were, or where we were before the tariffs came up. Yeah. So there's, you know, they're basically just on hold as a condition of actually having negotiations to yeah. resolve the situation that led to having them in the first place. Yes. So... You know, we have uh, we have a reprieve, I guess, is how I would phrase it. Yeah. A um, stay of execution. Yeah, and yeah. hopefully, we call it that. hopefully, th you know, we'll actually see something come out of that. We haven't really seen a whole lot of progress on China negotiations in general, mm. uh, but hopefully, that will change. Well, in the last two, in the last couple of days, we've had what we would call as a country major progress because we're actually speaking to them again. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's that. Uh, but Having the conversation. Yeah, but it's my understanding that the like the two prerequisites for the conversation two, yeah. were to not apply the new tariffs, mm. which are on hold, but then there's the larger question, and it's the weird element of where like real world serious thing kind of bleeds into affecting our industry of yeah. mm -hmm. there or, was the situation. You know, corporate interests. Yeah, there was the situation with Huawei, Huawei. where the national security 
apparatus in the U.S. has identified them as a security threat, mm. where the devices they create and manufacture might be used by the Chinese government for spying purposes or you know espionage. So they had banned anybody in the U.S. any U.S. companies from buying Huawei um, components, and the reverse, Huawei wasn't able to buy U.S. stuff. Yes, so, you know, and apparently lifting that restriction is something that China is very eager to have enacted. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll have to see how that actually develops. And, and for some background information, for those who don't know who, what Huawei is, it's basically a huge cell phone and phone company. They are currently a little bit bigger than like Sony, I believe, at this moment in China. So they're just like an uprising company that's just like, like mm -hmm. taking over the electronic business. And that it is kind of concerning in some ways because they did note this is like the president is going against what his judicial office has suggested with mm -hmm. this just to start this no negotiation at the G20s, which is the uh, where the 20 largest economic countries. Right, that summit just mm. happened Yeah, last summit. Week. That's, that's yep. where this talk started happening again, and that's where this tariff got mm -hmm. reformed. Yeah, the, the yeah. talk about having talks. To <laughs> the, to talk. Yeah, the talk about having talks about money. About money. The, yeah, I think the moral of the story for people who are doing Kickstarters now mm -hmm. I, I think it's still people are going to buckle down and pay attention like, hey, this could happen. This could mm -hmm. come back, like building in more. And we might see like a, a retraction of some people doing like, you know, cheaper, off the cuff, more risky stuff, you mm -hmm. know, working a little bit into the margins. I think it is prudent moving forward for these companies, like maybe do raise prices mm -hmm. a little bit or see some ways mm -hmm. we can or, or protect against this. Hopefully what will happen is that when people are budgeting out their Kickstarters, yeah. they mm -hmm. will set the goals a little bit higher yeah. to create a fund to deal with situations like this. Yeah, 25% buffer, <laughs> just in case. Just mm -hmm. in case it comes back. Yeah. Do um, be careful. But yeah, I mean, other than like these serious notes, I think we have something that we also really have to focus on. Okay. Which is the any awards that Wait, are going to be happening? Those are happening at Gen Con. They are happening they are. at Table Gen Con. Table takes is presented by Gen Con. How come we aren't covering this? Oh, we are oh, right we now. Are, you we say? Are covering, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so if you guys. So enough bad news. Yeah, hmm. enough bad news. Let's get to good news. Uh, but yeah, if you guys uh, don't know uh, what the Ennies are, they're basically a um, where they award. Uh, certain like games, certain like especially we're focused on the RPG mm. aspect of games. Like, hey, look at these games because they're notable for either settings, um, like design, mm -hmm. cover art, mm. all kinds of stuff. And so you really do want to tune in for that so you can at least know what kind of games you yeah, want to buy. The best of the best of stuff that you the play on your table. The gram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much. There you know, we, we've talked a little bit about all the different RPGs, but there's just so many in here that if you're more familiar with the big ones, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh, there's D&D, &D, Fate, whatever, you know, but there's just like a plethora. Fate's a big one. There's a, Fate yeah. is a big one. <laughs> I just like that it is. It's but yeah. Um, yeah. The indie well, game, the now it's like, oh, no, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. What are we going to do? It's taken over. It's, it's almost like it was fate. I'll support that. Uh, <laughs> Full points. Not, Full points. No Yay. falling damage. Hmm. I don't agree. All right. <laughs> Anyways, so between it, there's about uh, there's a spotlight. There's about 22 categories, and too, name, too many of them to name all at once. But we can go ahead and highlight some of the the, the mm -hmm. ones that we find exciting. Yeah, well, um, and the actually, ones that you probably care about. Yeah, in all yeah, honesty. Yeah, well, honest. it is probably worth. Like, there are so many categories, and yeah. there are so many nominees that it's almost guaranteed that you are not going to have already played them all or even be aware of them all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So take this as a, a list of things to go check out yeah. and see what else to try, like what else is out there, what mm. else to explore, because you're likely going to stumble across something that's going to pique your interest, and then you will have a new rabbit hole that you can run down and find out everything on. Right, so let's start with the big category, best typesetting. <laughs> check notes. Check oh, notes. never mind. No. <laughs> We're not, not doing that one. All right. Uh, Best turning. JK, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We are actually going to be talking about the judge spotlight. Mm -hmm. So we're not really too sure what, why the reason why these judges uh, highlighted these games. Mm. They're just either it could be something they found notable about mm -hmm. these games mm. or just something like maybe they were second place-ish, uh, but didn't quite make the mark mm -hmm. to be nominated. Yeah. I think it's a little bit like when they used to have bookstores back in the day. Mm. Uh, mm. They would have the booksellers there pick their favorite like books the, and the put them up picks. on the, mm -hmm. yeah. the staff yeah. picks. I think, it's very, I think it's very similar. These are the judges' <laughs> picks. These are like, these are games that we like. I'm sorry to use such an archaic reference like bookstores. Yeah. Bookstores? Yeah. Yeah. We are these bookstores. <laughs> At Mox Boarding House, we have staff picks. 
or so there's a more existing thing board game stores yeah bookstores out board game stores in yeah so okay all right those tariffs. Wow. <laughs> but the thing that i really like about staff picks a lot of times <coughs> is that the staff will say why they pick something mm -hmm. so like this is a really interesting list of um uh, uh, you know judge a spotlight that we'll get into yeah. but i'm really curious why they pick some like we can speculate yeah. we know some of these games but I would love to get some commentary from the Ennies at some point yeah. as to why some of these were selected. You want me to grill them? No. I'll go talk to them. <laughs> Investigative journalism. Yeah, I'm just, all about it, Ben. Let's do just it. just <laughs> shove the microphone in their face. Why did you choose Tell this? me your secret. No, no, I'll, I'll do the secret microphone and like oh. a little, mm, little no. button cam and be like, oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so why'd you, why'd you pick this one? Hmm. Not a duffel bag that you'll just shove a fan in with a little camera? Well, I have, a, I have a purse that I okay. use for right. that. With wait, a can you just wait until I put my purse yeah. on the <laughs> shelf? <laughs> right here behind me? So, <laughs> what are the judges' spotlights? All right, so, um, do you want, uh, like, some of the games that popped out was, uh, I, forgive me, because I'm not going to pronounce this right, the Stygian. Stygian, thank you. Mm. Uh, Stygian Library. Um, if you guys, it's, it's kind of like a... Um, if you ever read the Discworld series, mm. you know there's that librarian. This is like a serious version of the librarian from the Discworld series. So you are a curator for a magical library. Oh, like on the librarians. Sure. But, but they're <laughs> magic books, though. Mm. Like See, on the librarians. And this is the whole game, oh. too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. the, you're in the library. Do you do go out to the library? And get the books. Yeah, or do you John Larroquette whole... sends you. <laughs> I think from the mo my understanding is that you are the arbiter of this. Like things are going to happen. There's probably like mythic feasts and stuff mm -hmm. that come out. Yeah, the, the library mm. is definitely like creepy and weird and eerie as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh my God, it's the page master. Yeah, oh, a little bit. Oh, that's right. Okay, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. I did. I was like, what is that and thing? And now everyone library? has been reminded, you're welcome. Yeah. Yes. I would totally play the Page Master. Like, that's well, now you can. Now you, you can. can. You kind of actually like have a Macaulay Culkin vibe going on. Really? Well, if you were animated, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really good. It's really good. You're doing sweet. But yeah. I'm into it. And then the next one is Archives of the Sky, which is a no GM future type role playing game. Mm -hmm. I am mm. I am scared to death of no GM RPGs. Why? Mm. Have you not mm. played any? I have not. You I should try not. them. Nobody ever wants to, and I'm like, I always try. I want to try. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to let's, put that on the list. Let's of put playing some things that, the things that <laughs> Christian has to do. My uh, my bucket list for games. Yeah. So uh, what is Archives of the Sky like? How is like other than a, a GM list game? Um, you know, what was the the shtick for that? Uh, mostly that it's it. You are set in the future, and mm -hmm. you're supposed to set up this like world and setting that you you thrive in. Okay. And mm. so that's just like I haven't played it myself, sure. but mm. that's Isn't like that's just writing a sci-fi novel. <laughs> yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, uh, but the easy, doing it the easy way with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's great. And then yeah, you, that always works out. <laughs> you write down your adventures and you publish it as a sci-fi novel. And then you get to argue with your friends over who owns the right. Like, yeah. yeah. It'll be yeah. a great time. Oh, the guy who it's publishes great. gets the right. Ask George <laughs> Martin. He'll still mm. tell you. Oh. Uh, what? That's real. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the bigger one that I like to note that uh, in terms of like all these nominees that I find that most stood out mm. in terms of things just for like its political nature is the Sigmata. Uh, this signal signal kills the fascist. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't sound political to you, I don't know what. <laughs> this game has been getting a lot of buzz all yeah. over the place. Yep. All over and the place. Uh, it was pretty big on Kickstarter. I, yeah. I think uh, as like asking the judges why they picked this game. It's like, well, this one turned a lot of heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, obviously, a lot of people were talking about it just because of the content of yep. the game. Well, so to get into that, it's a cyberpunk game set in, like, a dystopian 1980s uh, tyrannical regime, mm -hmm. and you are basically playing the resistance against that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, imagine Shadowrun, but... Uh, you know, maybe a little bit lower technology, but also instead of just taking jobs for corporations and working for money, you're cutting straight to the we need to take down the system kind mm. of thing. Take down the system. And That's you do that, but yeah, and it, it, I, I feel like it works a little bit like the, the video game Watch Dogs, where, yeah. you know, you're kind of got this kind of like underground hacker vibe. You just, you you just want to recruit friends. grandmas to help fight. I do. <laughs> I do. I, th I think my grandma would be great. Sure. All the grandmas. I was like, can we just talk about how it's kind of weird that talking about killing fascists is politi political yep. in this Well, I, I think it, it, it is political because of... It's because we call a lot of things fascist. Now. Well, there's yeah. that, but it's, I think it's also political specifically because of um, the certain people 
assume that when you're talking about fascists, you're mm. talking about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Which is, you know, <laughs> which is weird. Perhaps telling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And sometimes they are fascists. Well, Correct. So. <laughs> sometimes. But they're unlikely to admit that. <coughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so what else do we have? Uh, we also have uh, plot armor, which mm-hmm. is basically you are a protagonist that knows that I have plot armor. Mm. That somehow <laughs> something's going to save my butt because yeah. I'm the protagonist. Uh, it's a, it's kind of like a goofy setting. It's it's very metagamey. Yeah. That mm-hmm. you have to know, like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna walk into this dungeon, and then suddenly a trap is gonna set. I'm gonna like almost step on a trap, but a rat's gonna be there, and the rat's gonna die. Yeah. So. It just reminds me of like any D and D game where a new character shows up, and you're like, well, you've got the PC glow about you. Let's adventure together. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You seem trustworthy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like. Is it? I've heard about things like this before, but you have. Like one, what was that thing we were talking about? Where you have like one weakness, or so like one, th- like you know it's gonna kill you or something. So you're like avoiding that more and more, but it's getting uh, like, so uh, like nothing else can touch the, you. The story, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, well, so the, there was a story game that came out. His name escaping me now, but yeah, you you were actually assassins in a future yeah. uh, where everybody had a machine that would predict how they would die, mm. oh. and you were assassins who had to operate in that world where yeah. it was like you have to kill the target. Here's how they have to die. Mm. So then you have to arrange this weird Rube Goldberg situation <laughs> to get them to die poetically yeah. based off of. If that. I was ever going to become game. an assassin in real life, I would only use Rube Goldberg devices. Mm. Seems reasonable. Mm. Also <laughs> extremely inefficient. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that would be. I too think much I keep their attention long enough. <laughs> For the for the device to work. Mouse trap. Oh, yes. that game never worked. Okay, I'm not gonna. Th- <laughs> you I put it together wrong. I still loved it. Mm. No. I mean, the the way you play that game is you just take the box by yourself into another room and put it together and push the button. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's the best way to play that game. Yep. <laughs> so, what else do we have? Uh, we also have uh, the elephant and the macaw banner players guide, which is uh, if you don't uh, like if you have no idea what the setting is, it's 1600 like fantasy, but with Brazil. Oh, that explains the elephants. Yes, mm. the elephants. And it's also based off of a book series. I'm there not no actually too sure what the <laughs> name are, is. I mean, the there's book probably series. some. Uh, yeah. Isn't, isn't the book zoo. series the, the <laughs> elephant macaw banner? In the 1600s. Banner? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Taking it is. them over on mm-hmm. like yeah, a big flat raft. Series. Yeah. So. Well, so, so like, it, I mean, from the, the brief description, um, it seems like it's a fantasy series where uh, there's one character uh, who I believe is like a Dutch adventurer, mm-hmm. and there's mm. one who is uh, uh, Yoruba, which I believe is one of the indigenous folks of Brazil. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, <clears throat> this seems to be a, like an extremely uh, like local fantasy story of the threads of that region mm. playing into it, and seeing an RPG come from outside the U.S. Yes. Yeah. Uh, drawing very particular from local roots is noteworthy, mm-hmm. and that might be why it's on the list by itself. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I like the, uh, like, from coming from a different cultural mm-hmm. standpoint, I like when games develop more from different, like, folklore other yeah. than European folklore, because mm-hmm. oh there's, yeah. like, of course, there's the Pacific Islanders, and, of course, Brazilian, African uh, tales as well, and I just kind of like that embrace of, like, hey, there's other mm-hmm. fairy tales. Yes. <laughs> other fantasy yep. stories out there. Yep. More es- ghosts. Especially coming from that direction. Yes, coming yeah. As opposed to someone here, like, just being like, great, I like those stories, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would love to play this just to learn. The, I just want to see this book. The folklore mm-hmm. and the, the history. I think, <laughs> I think it was great uh, to pick as a spotlight because I know nothing about it, mm-hmm. and it makes me want to take yep. a look at well, it. Well, so this is what, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, a lot of these games we have not heard of, we have mm-hmm. not played, or maybe we've heard a little bit of, mm. but this gives us a list of stuff to look at if we're curious about finding a new thing. Yes. So that is how I hope everybody uses the... And full I, list. Yeah, and I do love yeah. games that are based on folklore from other places. Yes. Mm. More or fun. even American folklore. I like all yeah, folklore Ameri- really like is what it comes oh down yeah, to. Like yeah. Very like uh, Tall Tales. Tall Tales. Yes. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Tall Tales. Yeah. The movie. I did a whole series about Tall Tales. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the best game awards uh, that they have out. So these are the ones that we do have more descriptions on just because, hey, they are nominated for best for game. For best yeah. game. Yeah. Which is so a, the, that's, <laughs> the best, that's the best <laughs> picture category <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, Annie's, really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we're going to start out at the top. Yes. Uh, the top is uh, Companion's Tale. So it's a storytelling world play- building game. If you ever played The Quiet Year or mm-hmm. Microscope, mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. how this game works is that you uh, you – build the world that you're in it doesn't have any dice it just you have a piece of paper and you doodle and fill in all the rest (coughs) um so it's designed for one shots 
Um, and the difference that it that it is, is for this game to be different than Quiet Year and the, the microscope is mm -hmm. that you are actually the sidekick to an adventurer mm. mm -hmm. and you are barding <laughs> their adventures through the world. Now I'm imagining everybody like just competing <laughs> loots. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Doing. Yep. 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 Yeah. Brave, so, brave Sir Robin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but it's not. You're not uh, a very competent storyteller, so mm. you just kind of have to like. Well, it may, well uh, you know, you might not be competent, or but I think the way it was pitched to me is that you're an unreliable narrator. Yeah. Which doesn't mean that you're a bad storyteller. It's just that you might have an agenda as to how you want to present the story of your time with the hero, mm. and that may not have accurately represented what actually happened. Yeah. So it's it largely believed that, like in the Sherlock Watson relationship, that Watson is considered an, an unreliable narrator mm. Mm -hmm. because <laughs> he doesn't want to make his friend look bad right. after he's dead. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So, so that is one nominee for best game. Yes, mm. that's one nominee. Wait, there's more than one nominee. There is. There is. Oh. How there's are they going to choose? Mm. Uh, usually a there's vote. There's actually five nominees. Glorious nominees to choose from. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, oh, bless oh, you. Blessings yeah. be upon you. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, the next one is Dialect, a game about languages and how it dies. Mm -hmm. So mm. this this whole game is a, it's it's one of those, like, it's another GM-less game. Mm. I know, red flags coming up. No, 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 <laughs> just, just a certain amount of... Uh, this is a whole new world. Yeah. A new fantastic point of view. Is oh. that from something? That's really good. <laughs> No one to that, tell you no. <laughs> no GM to tell you no or where to go. <laughs> or say that I'm a only dreaming. Rainbow. Mm. Anyway. No. Wait, I thought you were talking about. I was. Okay. I, I have a whole thing about how those two songs. They do. Oh, they they, they, they could perfectly meld into each other. We've talked okay. about they this. They will be before. never oh, yeah, divorced again. Anyway. Mm. Uh, but the whole idea is that you oh, are yeah. of death. Uh, I, an isolated tribe, mm -hmm. either by choice or by circumstances, and you uh, each play, each of your players play a different archetype. So you could have the old man that, or old woman, or old person that like knows about the past society and mm -hmm. wants this language to be a certain way and doesn't want to conform to the new one. The youngins, the new ones, or like the witch doctor or something like that. You mm -hmm. all have different <laughs> archetypes. I like the dance that went with it. <laughs> but yeah, so the whole idea is that you take a certain word and then develop the language to have this certain word mean something else like for example cool can mean temperature and or oh man that's awesome mm. cool um in our language so the whole idea is that at the end of it you would be speaking your language but in a different dialect yeah right it's uh but you, but that's the way you keep your language alive yes. is that kind of the way that that works mm. Mm. I, I think it, like it's, a, it's a game that kind of creates a, a micro environment and wants you to play with language really, really quickly. Yeah. So think about how slang and in-jokes worked with you and your friends. Mm -hmm. well, you know, just you're, you're playing over the course of a year, you know, you're doing a campaign, uh, you know, in-jokes are gonna happen, you're gonna, things are gonna mean different things than people, uh, people outside of the group who hear your conversations are gonna be confused. Yeah. So I think they're trying to take that natural development over time and put it in kind of like a tiny little pressure cooker boiler yeah. and trying to accelerate it for a one shot and see what you end up with so that you can see how oh. languages Develop. change very quickly. Yeah. And then like, so how it dies, because then your language eventually will elab like basically form into something else, mm -hmm. mm. something different. I mean, like for example, historical example is barbarian used to be like a slang term for somebody who doesn't speak Roman. They go bar, 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 bar. Mm. So barbarian. Oh. Is that's, <laughs> that's where it came from. Well, I think it's... <laughs> That's, that's, no, no, no. <laughs> I think he just likes the blah, 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 blah. I did. That was it. That was the it whole was, thing. I just it like. It was to make fun of people who weren't Romans. See, now so now I want a whole version of the Peanuts <laughs> where the adults are just barbarians. It's bar, 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 and they're all wearing Viking horns. <laughs> they actually mm -hmm. kind of close yeah, to that. Actually, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think but, it's just the fact that it's playing, uh, just like the sense of loss. Because I think this is a th thing that a lot of people mm -hmm. go through for like small, isolated, and then the people die out, mm -hmm. right? So there's this mm -hmm. situation where you just like I, I just saw a play about trying to keep a language alive. The same go way. Away. Yeah. Or, or, but even just think about think about the lessons you can learn from that applied to other things that aren't necessarily language, like a game. Mm. Think about when you have played a game and you loved it, and then the players for that game move on. And mm -hmm. fewer and fewer people are playing that game. Yeah. It's a similar kind like, th it's a really interesting idea to me. Dialect is a really fascinating game because of the topic matter that it's taking and how it's trying to really show you very quickly how those things adapt and change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, it's again, it's telling us that we as a people have uh, too short of attention spans <laughs> and don't stick to anything. <laughs> Probably long. that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a game that you will most likely love and then play for a while and forget about because and it's a game. Discover. And, and then, then rediscover. rediscover. Right. Yeah. Also, like, how would people feel about puns? Oh. In this game, I feel like, like your group, they, like you'd they, have to—they might be heretical. We'll, you'll have to. You'll have you, to you'd see. have to have like an X, like the X just for the puns or no puns. Like you would have to have this discussion. <coughs> I feel like that would be interesting. Can you imagine a whole language developed just out of puns? Oh yes. my gosh, I want to play this game. I as think that. I think most dads <laughs> speak that already. <laughs> uh, well, like uh, also, I want to know how many times people have tried to run the. Uh, what Alak and Jihad, uh, the Star Trek episode. Mm. Remember the the whole alien race that could only speak in references. You don't remember that? No. no. Uh, it was Alak and Jihad at Tanagra, I think. Yeah. So like, uh, Kirk. <laughs> well, no. yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So hey, like, well, like, amazingly, like, the guy Kirk, behind Kirk the and alien are, are, Kirk and and alien are, are <laughs> stranded on a planet, and the alien race's language is only references. Mm. Uh, so it's all references to something else. Oh, and like, Kirk, on the, and, or like on no, the no, magicians Picard, Picard. when they didn't want the yeah. medieval mm -hmm. people yeah. to understand what they were talking about. Yep. They talk about yep. local the celebrity gossip. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, so Picard, you know, oh. has to learn how to communicate with this alien. But, you know, he's like, well, like w this is fire. And the alien's like, no, it's, you know, like it, uh, it's Prometheus's gift. Mm. You know, that's how the alien talks. You know, like, you know, Prometheus oh. giving the gift to humans. Mm. Oh. You know, that, that would be kind of like the analogy. And Picard's like fire, and he's like no. Pr like, so they just kind of <laughs> don't co uh, communicate for a long time mm. until they can create a story that is provides a bridge. So it's a mm. sorry, it's I'm me. creating Star Trek scenes in my head yep. now, where where Picard's like, I've got this, and the guy's like, oh, and he's like, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. <laughs> 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 yep, that's definitely how, exactly, yeah, you've oh. seen that episode, clearly. <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. It's classic. It sounds a fun time. Yeah, see, Shaka won the falls, won the wall spell. Mm. See, Marion gets it. Anyway. Yeah, but yeah. Next game. Uh, okay, no, I have seen that episode. See? <laughs> <laughs> it all coming back. But yeah, the next <sighs> one, uh, uh, Dreams Askewed and Dreams Apart. Uh, this is kind of notable because we did talk about Kickstarter called uh, uh, Sleepaway Camp. This is kind of like... Uh, this sleepaway camp was based off of this game. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a post-apocalyptic. You are a hold on, blah, 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 words. Pokemon elliptic. No, <laughs> <laughs> you role play as a community member in this post-apocalyptic society, and you basically play through other scenes with other characters mm -hmm. or other players at the table. And the ones who are not active in the scene make sound effects <coughs> <coughs> and create the environment. Like coughing. Like coughing. You're welcome. Or like, oh, there suddenly you heard a noise. And then mm -hmm. you, you hit the knock. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Another intriguing. big thing that's notable about this game is that you get to go ahead and like imagine like, hey, yes, the apocalypse, the world ended. Now you can create gender assignments. Like if mm. you want to go ahead and mm -hmm. what what do you explore? You explore I've been genders, told not to do that. Mm. genders and gender meaning. So like you're not necessarily all human. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, you could be part cyborg. And what does what do you identify mm -hmm. as? Yeah. Yeah, I think Dream Askew, Dream Apart is really noteworthy because of the number of games that we have seen that have been clearly inspired by it. Sleep mm -hmm. Away, the one I think we talked about, I think it was last week in yes. the Kickstarters, uh, was one of those. But it has come up a lot in a lot of indie creators talking about the games that have inspired them. This comes up very consistently and very frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're the kind of person who likes the development of indie games, you should definitely check this one out, and that's probably why it's why it's here because it's so influential. Yeah. Uh, you know, dig into the roots of what inspired some other games, and you you might uncover some interesting nuggets. Mm -hmm. So this game that's up for Game of the Year, mm -hmm. mm. uh, which means that it came out this year, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And it's that influential already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean, like the, the indie gaming scene can move pretty quickly, but yeah, sure it can. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think, like, in role-playing games, it's weird. People often play as themselves, or at least mm -hmm. gender-wise. You know, it's like, well, I'm a woman, so I want to play a woman character. Or, who, or whoever your class is, mm -hmm. is, like, reminiscence. Like, oh, you know, I like running in. I, my personality is, like, I run into danger, you know? So that's how I play the character. So I like these ones that really push you to, like, mm -hmm. you can't be yourself because the things in here don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. Uh, and then the next game... Uh, is Liminal, a wordplay game. It's uh, basically an urban fantasy game in the UK. There's a magic, there's secret police. Mm. It's kind of like um, Harry Potter almost. There. 
<laughs> the vibe what, I get is a little that? more, a little more World of Darknessy. Oh, World uh, of Darknessy. A, a little bit. Like, it doesn't seem to be at, like quite to that level. Yeah. Um, it seems to be a little more like positive. Um, Dresden Files, I think, is oh, actually probably okay, a, a yeah, better yeah, yeah. fit. So Urban yeah. fantasy, you say? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we're not going to be seeing <laughs> any more of that. <laughs> so like, yeah. I think a, a UK Dresden Files might yeah. be a flippant way to summarize it. Mm. Um, I haven't r read through it or experienced it, mm -hmm. so I was a little surprised to see it here. But I, I, I remember that it was recently announced, you know, recently uh, released. So for it to be in this list means that it must be a pretty solid entry into that genre. Yeah. And I'm a big urban fantasy fan, mm. so this is okay. probably one that I'm going to give another look to. I've been saying, urban fantasy is the new steampunk. Mm. Mm. I know, but there's there's actually, you know, to, to note, there's actually a, a lot of stiff competition in terms of urban fantasy mm -hmm. yeah. that's going out. Like, uh, this year, Cult has three nominations, and Invisible Sun has four, and those are both, mm -hmm. like, modern fantasy type games and it's it's kind of interesting that this got is, yeah, yeah if you want it to still be cool those all do have to come out this year yes mm. <laughs> but um and then that leaves us to the last one a mothership a player survival game it is not aliens that's <laughs> <laughs> totally not aliens. not totally but not I mean, aliens but come on <laughs> but but is it aliens it's no it's alien it's alien yeah. oh sorry i'm sorry alien mm. <laughs> it's 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 Offworlders. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> definitely survival non horror in space. <laughs> survival horror in space. That could be anything. That could be alien. That could be aliens. That mm. could be alien three. That could mm. be proto event proto horizon. Yeah. That counts. <laughs> there you go. That could yeah. be a Prometheus. Pro pro <laughs> Prometheus. <laughs> yeah, but but besides that, it's it from my understanding it was first a pay what you want game. You basically could just look at the PDF files and then like, hey, if you like it, give money mm -hmm. to the creators. Um, it's really fr it's like a really good fleshed out setting because yes of course it, it had uh, like where it's coming out yeah. incredible tight layout like for example like you could open up the PDF and then per turn to page two and immediate immediately see all the weapons and what their damages is so it's kind of like a clean layout mm. mm -hmm. yeah well so the, the the visual aesthetic for mothership is very like zine esque you know yes. I think we had talked about zines for a little while when Kickstarter was running. Uh, promotion. I think Mothership may have actually had a project in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's very, very zine-esque. The, the first release of it, uh, I actually remember printing out, because it was, I think, one or two sheets of paper, and then you would fold and, and cut, so that you ended up with this tiny little booklet that mm. had all the rules. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, a, a really, like, bare bones, here's what you need, you know how this is going to go, because yeah. yes. you've <laughs> seen the movies. Uh, I think kind of, again, like, the flippant way to describe this game would be, you know, what if D&D first edition kind of thing mm -hmm. was about Alien instead of Lord of the Rings? Mm. Yes. Okay. That's that's the kind of theme and So it's got kind of an OSR feel to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, what I liked about this, I went on the site, it says it's actively in development. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many role-playing games, not a lot that I've seen at least, have kind of said this. You know, a lot, a lot of role-playing games come out and say like, oh, this is the game. Mm -hmm. And then it comes out later and like, oops, that thing, there was issues, now this is the game. Yeah. You know, to be kind of upfront and honest with it, say like, hey, like where this is in development, mm -hmm. you know, this is an alpha version, we're listening to feedback, we're playing. If it's not finished, why is it nominated? Game. There's, well, well the, like this thing, like, because no game's ever finished and they're just being honest about it. Yeah. You know, it's like D&D &D comes out with a new yeah. edition. I, mean, I think she may be talking more about like the idea of it's a living document as opposed yeah. to editions. And, mm -hmm. That might be where I, I'm not, I'm, was not aware that they were kind of positioning it that way, yeah. but that might tie really into the zine aesthetic of it. Yeah. Where, like, a zine is not supposed to be the tome that you will reference in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. The zine is the thing that you take for now. Yeah. Okay. And later on, you get a new zine to see what's happening then. Mm. So they may be kind of taking that same approach for this game, where they're just going to tweak it and add some stuff and develop it and see where it goes. Well, I mean, erratas exist for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and new editions of a game, but mm. I mean, if you're going to say a game's not finished. Well, they're treating it like a video game. There's, well, it's, a, it's not that it's not finished. They, that's but it's my like big problem with video games is that they're not finishing them before they put them out and I don't get to play them until they're all the stuff <laughs> is there. <laughs> well, they, for more just like a testing it out, like what I like about alphas is like you get mm -hmm. it in front of the, the hungry people mm -hmm. and they can fix stuff before yeah. like having the release like yeah. you that, that's, you don't that's hold like it an back that's an open play test yeah, yeah no yeah. and, and, and yep. play testing is one of the most important parts of a game that's how you figure out whether it works or not what works what doesn't yeah. all of that i just yeah so i uh, see uh, we have fact to, that we, this we, got we, nominated we, we, we'd, have to, technically we'd have to look into that because like i know that mothership is out yes um so i, I again uh, what i suspect is that <coughs> they're positioning it that way 
It's more that this is a living game, not mm -hmm. that it yeah. is unfinished, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's more like looking at an MMO where the game that you, the World of Warcraft game you played two years into World of Warcraft yeah, is different. not the same game that you would have played day one. No. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I suspect that it's a little more along that lines mm -hmm. than this is just a play test. You know, I, we'll I think that's out. harder to pull off successfully in print. And the fact I, that this game agree. has yeah. been nominated mm -hmm. means mm. that it must be very, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It oh is. Yeah. It is. Like, yeah. again, if you want a sci fi, old school OSR kind of thing, um, you know, with very, very straightforward, simple production values, uh, just focused on neat content, get on the table, yeah. Mothership is what you're looking for. Mm. Th usually we don't see things that are still in the play test phase mm -hmm. yeah. on this list. Mm -hmm. no, so that's that really is, cool. It is mm. a good thing to note. Um, and then I guess we could go ahead and go through, like, those are the nominees for the best games. You mm -hmm. might want to go ahead and check them out. Just, like, those top five. So, go ahead. Go check. Okay. Uh, the next, we're going to kind of, like, go through these a little bit speedily, because these are games that you will probably commonly recognize and games that we have already referred to. Like, mm. the mm -hmm. best games were the best games for a reason. Yep. They probably have multiple nominees in different categories. Mm -hmm. so. And, and mm. again, we also did not, we're not going to cover all of the categories or all yes. of the nominees. Because mm. um, there's just so many. Yep, we picked out a couple categories that we kind of wanted to run down, yes. and then some of those will have more to talk about. Mm. Yeah. So for best rules, best, best rules, best rules. This isn't on that list. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm I feel vindicated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So the best rules: Call of Cthulhu starter set, uh, the Forbidden Lands retro open world survival fantasy RPG, mm -hmm. uh, Legacy Life Among the Ruins second edition, uh, Mothership. Oh wow! Mm. Surprise! What? <laughs> uh, what? Your, your mind is blown. Yeah. No, no, no! I melted that thing long ago. <laughs> and then now it's just anger. Yes, all anger. <laughs> and then for those Warhammer fans, Warhammer Fantasy Role Playing Core Book Set. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so it, like this list is very interesting. Yeah. Um, the Kalgathu starter set is in here. So I had I heard a lot of really good praise about how good of a beginner box that is. Mm -hmm. So people who are curious about stepping out of D and D and into Kalgathu, maybe. It sounds like it's going to be perfectly designed for that. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I hear the Critical Roles are guys are going to do that soon. Uh, mm. Are they doing the starter set in particular, though? No. Yeah. No. See? But you can play along with them at home. So, <coughs> so we're saying about stuff that was released this year, mm -hmm. right? So the Call of Cthulhu, the starter set specifically... Mm -hmm. is the starter set is a recent release, I believe. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then Forbidden Lands, this is uh, from Free League Publishing. Uh, I believe it was distributed by Modifius. We talked about Free League with a number of games, including Alien. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're definitely kind of one of the key studios releasing a lot of stuff right now. Yeah. A lot of really high-profile stuff. But Forbidden Lands is their their hex crawl kind of old school ad fantasy adventure, and I've only heard really, really fantastic things about it. Mm. Mm. Okay. And then for Warhammer, like Warhammer, the fantasy role-playing game has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's interesting that this version, I don't know if previous versions have won awards, but for this one, it's like, this game has been around for a while, but with this, they got it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so it, it's interesting because this, uh, I think the, the fantasy game was done, mm. and then f uh, Cubicle 7, who is, this is the edition that's nominated, yeah. they uh, were also the people who did the One Ring, uh, which was another really, really gorgeous RPG. Yes. Mm. Uh, they kind of brought the Warhammer Fantasy RPG back out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this... I mean, I'm sure people are happy to see it back out, but they definitely yeah. did repolish it, um, mm -hmm. and you know, it looks gorgeous and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, other couple interesting ones, Mothership, we talked about. Mm -hmm. Mothership. Um, but then Legacy Life Among the Ruins is a Powered by the Apocalypse um, post-apocalyptic game. The interesting trick there, and the kind of probably why it's listed here for interesting rules, mm. is that you are playing a family like, or an organization in the post-apocalypse. And every session or every story, you pick a character who is a member of that. You play through the story, and then you advance time mm. and play a new member of that family or organization. So there's you're kind of like tracking. So both not all in the same family unit, but on the, along that family line. Yes, or mm. or, or, or organization or things like. And there's interesting elements of you choose to play like. Uh, you know, you could play the leader, you could play the iconoclast who is rebelling against your own family. Mm. Uh, you know, different ways to kind of play off of the theme of whatever organization you're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, but that's, you're that's so cool for mm -hmm. like, that's if very you're, neat. For, you're the, that pa sounds the amazing. parent. It does. You know, you start out and you're the, you're like venturing out into this world and you're, you're trying to protect your kids and then like you're the kid and mm -hmm. you're the rebel, right? Yep. And you yep. like play against your own characters. Exactly, exactly. Jake, you're really good at talking about games that I'm not necessarily interested in ways that make me want to play yeah. them. <laughs> I, I think play that might be your talent. All of yeah. these. 
all I think of those. One thing, like we're we're talking about a lot of RPGs yep. here. I think we've yes. talked a bit Yay. in the past about, and all of these are like different RPGs. Mm -hmm. They're not like the core stuff that we grew up with. But as a burgeoning RPG player, I play. D&D mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. yep. and I think a lot of people play D&D &D mostly and like the tricky thing about this is not just like getting a group together mm -hmm. to play <coughs> these games and I, I think part of it is people are like oh well, all these games here like am I going to be able to get a group are my mm -hmm. friends going to be interested in this I think you can get these buy these just like read through it oh, yeah. maybe yeah. use some of this stuff in whatever you're doing and it's not the kind of thing like well i can't get this because my friends won't play that is game. that is definitely something i very strongly believe in yeah. is that a uh it's important to remember there are many different ways to engage with games yes it is okay to uh, at least i tell myself this because otherwise i wouldn't be able to sleep at night yeah it is okay to <laughs> buy rpgs <laughs> <laughs> uh, to and you know buy RPGs and just read them. Yes, it's okay to buy miniatures and just assemble them and maybe not play with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it's okay to do these things. Engage with these in a way that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. I do think that if you can play with them, if you can broaden them, like that's gonna be. You're better. gonna get the maximum yeah. experience yeah. But, that way. Yeah. Sure. But it's not like you're not a real fan. You know, if you just bought the RPG and read it, like yeah. you're mm -hmm. still a fan of that RPG. You just haven't had a chance to explore an aspect of Turns it. Turns out I'm yeah. a fan of a lot of RPGs, <laughs> yeah. but I only play about a dozen. I mean, it does really depend on the group uh, mm -hmm. that you, you associate with, because there are, like, for me, I started off when I was, like, what, 16, 15? And I kept playing regular D&D &D until I was 18, and mm -hmm. then since 18, I haven't really touched. And here we are, three weeks later. Three <laughs> weeks later, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost in my 30s, by the way, surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost in my 30s now, and it's been that long since I've actually played an, uh, an actual, like, since, like, I guess I did a brief stint when 5th edition came out, because yeah. of course, 5th mm -hmm. edition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but and I didn't play 5th edition until this year. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, I, I got burned by 4th edition. I was like, nope. Well, because that's what I thought. You mm. got burned because it was too hot and too good. Mm, yeah, that's exactly why. It, I, I got burnt mm. because I set it on fire. But, mm, but, yeah. but you were saying like, but that you haven't I've, Well, because I found a group. Well, mostly I'm a what they call a beer and pretzels gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am one of those people that a lot of people hate because I'm like, snacks and beer. Mm. So play. <laughs> this is how we, we, we yeah. have my snacks. I have Touch my everything. drinks mm -hmm. and, and stuff. So uh, I'm always careful. with. Uh, also, when I go to board games, I'm like, okay, let's see. Do they have everything in slots? So I'm not going to go ahead and play with that if they have everything covered in like saran wrap and stuff mm. like that. <laughs> saran uh, wrap yeah, I don't know if we want to play with anybody who has covered every component <laughs> in saran wrap. That might be a warning sign that you are about to get an axe to the back of the yeah, head. Yeah, that is a, re that is a exit red real flag. Quickly. It's like, oh, murder game but, night. Okay. But I, I think what Emma's also trying to bring up here yes. is that even if you are a diehard D&D &D fan mm. yes. um, or D&D &D player, you're only playing D&D, &D, your group is only playing D&D. &D. Yeah. That doesn't mean that other RPGs are not worth your time. Yes. Uh, it's for darn sure. Mm -hmm. Like reading another RPG, like reading Dungeon World, for example, uh, with the advice it has for, for GMs. Mm. So good. Bringing some of that or just read through that and whatever resonates with you, bring to your D&D &D game. Yeah. And your D&D game will be better for it. Yeah. The mm -hmm. more that you kind of dip into other areas, the more inspiration you can pull from other games, the better your core game will be. Well, and the more time you spend on your craft and learning mm -hmm. about it, if you if, if if gaming is what you do, then, yep. you know, the better you're going to get at it. Mm. Yeah, and, and then plus gaming, like role-playing role games, tabletop board games have become more of an accepts, mm -hmm. accept, eh, accessible thing. Acceptable. Acceptable thing to society. Acceptably mm. accessible. <laughs> yes, ex Except. Acceptably acceptable. <laughs> Except. All right, but yeah, now that it has become more open, you don't no longer have to hide that you play D and D. Like oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. I never like I I would I never yeah. hide. I never hid it. We yeah. were we were terrible. That's why we didn't have friends. Yep. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, on that sad note, let's continue with our, oh, uh, yeah, our nominees. <laughs> yeah, so let's go oh, through yeah. these fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, so for best setting, what do we have? Best setting, we have, oh, oh, Call of Cthulhu. Wow, mm -hmm. that sounds mm -hmm. familiar. Well, this is the Australia uh, version. Yeah, the Australian version. Yes, uh, Terror Which Australia set. So there's a difference. Super fun. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's just the idea. I, like, I've only like thumbed through the uh, PDF of that, and it just looks super cool. Sweet. Yes. Uh, and then Dreams Askew, Dreams mm -hmm. Apart, Forbidden Lands, Invisible Sun, and the fall of Delta Green. Mm. So since we, we talked about some of those already. Yes. Um, but Invisible Sun, in case people aren't aware, it was like luxury. <laughs> the uh, board? Yeah. It was, it was the board box? Yeah. It was definitely a, a luxury, serious 
surreal, magical realism weirdo it's game Apple as an products. artifact yeah. that is expensive and inaccessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes some people, like myself, really intrigued, and but it does you know, frustrate other people shelf. because it is not an easily accessible game. Yeah. Right. But it is gorgeous and weird. It's so if you like weird games, yeah. well, it's weird. I will say from the retail perspective, we got that thing in and I didn't know what it was and I was just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like having it on the retail floor, it's expensive. It's this big box. But we you gotta have one. We, we can't open it to like yep. show people. It's the so black cube. It's the black yeah, cube. So they just have to. They come in. They look at the price. They're like, no. Nope. They know exactly what it is and what they're getting. So. But eventually, you find that one person who's like, yes. Who came in for specifically that. look for it? Give it to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then, Fall of Delta Green. I yes. think we talked about this uh, kind of off the stream. Mm -hmm. If people aren't familiar. Delta Green is a like a modern take on Call of Cthulhu, mm -hmm. where you're members of a one or more government conspiracies, probably trying to stop Lovecraftian horrors from coming out. Mm, Depending, probably. Um, probably. Mm -hmm. But you're you're not an official part of the government, or at least for most of Delta Green kind of setting, you weren't. Mm -hmm. You were a rogue agent who was kind of operating on the fringe. Every character is Fox Mulder. All right. Yes, mm. basically. Uh, but a at one point, the Delta Green was an official government conspiracy. So fall of Delta Green is the game that plays through all of the bad stuff that happened that made Delta Green get canceled, basically. Yeah. The Revenge of the Sith of the Delta Green yes. universe. So you play through Delta Green at its high point and then all, through all of its problems. Mm. Yeah. And instead of using the Call of Cthulhu system, it uses the Gumshoe system from Trail of Cthulhu and Knight's Black Agents and stuff like that. It's a really, really awesome game. All right. Uh, See, you did it again. Good job. Mm. You're just like you're gouging money right now. Is there. that what it is? Oh, I don't have money to gouge. <laughs> don't even worry about it. All right. Oh, so next category, ble 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 best supplement is uh, Fairy Fire, uh, fifth edition supplement. Star Trek Adventures, the science division of supplement rule books. Um, the seventh edition guide to Cthulhu Invictus. Mm -hmm. uh, Book of Ages and the Glorantha. <laughs> the Glorantham. Thank you. Source book. <laughs> So the, I think it's <laughs> worth noting that the fairy fire supplement, that is the super 80s uh, fairy yeah, like for 5th edition that we covered <laughs> as Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah the, the one that was like, a, the one that was like a, like My Little Pony meets heavy metal. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> like super, <laughs> super squish, 80s. Squish, squish. Yeah. Super, yeah. super 80s, and it looked really cool. That's mm -hmm. the only one that I'm actually very familiar with on this best supplement list, but it looks, mm -hmm. it looks super cool. Mm. Yes. So then uh, we also have Product of the Year. Product of the Year, we got uh, Companion's Tale, mm -hmm. Dialect, Dinosaur, Dinosaur Princess, Princess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dreams of Skewed, Forbidden Lands, Invisible mm -hmm. Sun, mm -hmm. and Liminal Mask of... Mm, Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep. I wasn't even going to give that one a try. <laughs> Nyarlathotep. Okay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time we've met it. We've we've mentioned that particular yeah. game. Yeah. It is not. It is no. not. It's like, just an artifact, yep. right? Yeah. Like, so, so, yeah. Several. I mean, we've mentioned a few of these before. Uh, Massive Nyarl Thotep was one of the Kickstarters that we. The, the prop set was one of the Kickstarters that we mm, highlighted yeah. at one yeah. point. Mm -hmm. And then Mothership, and Silent Titans. Mm -hmm. So of these, like Dinosaur Princess. Yes. Uh, or Dinosaur Princesses is like a family-friendly RPG. I don't think we've talked about it before. It sounds like no. something I would write. Mm -hmm. Yep. Apparently, it's really, really good. It's on this list. Yeah. It's on this list. Uh, we talked about <coughs> Masks of Nero Thotep, uh, and then Silent Titans um, is like another kind of uh, OSR, uh, like map product and, and another setting. Mm. Okay. Um, another thing that I didn't put on the list that I want to cover is the best cover art is a category that you don't necessarily have to be aware of the game. Mm. And this is a a thing you can judge for yourself at home of what you like. You yeah. just go in, click on the best cover Your vote art. does not count. Yes. It doesn't count, but you can imagine it does. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. So, so like just, with real elections. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so just you just look at them. Look at the, the pretty cover art. That's that's something, as, as somebody who's an artist, to, yeah. to gander. And, and then buy it for that. Yeah, buy yeah. it for the art. <laughs> well, so what were your overall takeaways? Because you did a lot of research into the awards. Yes. yes. What were some of the overall trends that you found? So for I have this whole list of big winners um, and in terms of nominations. Mm -hmm. We got... Uh, 
um, so urban fantasy, mm -hmm. big yep. thing that's been coming out. Uh, so th it seems mm -hmm. to be a resurgence. And as a, a beautiful boy of the 90s, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it warms my heart. Like uh, Colt was on, uh, on here a whole bunch that we uh, categories that we weren't covering. I'm yeah. super mm -hmm. happy to see that back. Uh, but Colt, Invisible Sun, uh, Liminal, you know, a lot of these getting a lot of recognition. Yes. I'm very happy about mm. it. Yeah, I, I like anything urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, <laughs> I read a lot of crap urban fantasy books, like a <laughs> lot of them. Well, then you can look up these three. There's three different these urban... These could save you. Yeah, these yeah. could save you. Could they? They could. could. But then I'd have to stop buying superhero <laughs> games every time I see a new one. But yeah, there's like basically ten, 10 nominations between these three different games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then two of them are up for uh, uh, get best product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. It's interesting because we're seeing urban. We're not seeing high fantasy or traditional fantasy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of uh, like with a, a few with, a, with only a few exceptions. Like, yeah. yeah. We get, we're a little a lot of tired of mm -hmm. just the more traditional urban fantasy, fantasy and cyberpunk making a big comeback mm -hmm. this year. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I'm not surprised because when you have something like D and D do mm -hmm. really really well, mm. then you can't make your company or your game survive on being D and D but better. Yeah. Right. Or mm -hmm. different. You know, yeah. like when Unless you're Pathfinder, yeah. Then when you, when then a lot you of people, when, when a lot that. of people are unsatisfied with with the front runner for a category, mm. then you can do a lot of get a lot of mileage out of fixing what they what you see as their flaws. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when they're very very strong, you have to be that much more distinct to find a niche to grow in. Yeah. Mm. So you know, this is why I think we're seeing more sci-fi, more uh, cyberpunk, more urban fantasy. Yes. Because those are. We're also, see, we're also TV seeing a lot shadow. more, you know, televised versions of yep. those things. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. urban fantasy as a as a television yep. or a movie genre is not something that actually well, I mean, existed uh, not too long ago. This might be just also filling the void that was Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> so maybe mm -hmm. people don't want old fantasy; they want the modern stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So because they got burned by the old one. <laughs> so what else? <laughs> but yeah. Um, so another indie game that you might have heard a lot of times mentioned, Mothership. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it should be noted. That's the one that's not finished. Mm. <laughs> Mothership. Mothership. <laughs> yes. But no. Uh, this is a, what it's, it's got four nominations mm -hmm. just by itself. Yeah. And that's including best game, best product, best rules, best adventure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Boom! That's like that's that should be something that is a notable product yeah. for mm -hmm. a reason. Yeah. Um, also, I not a big surprise. Monty Cook Games definitely mm -hmm. slamming the door in yep. terms of like. Mon hey, Mon look Monty at Cook gets a lot of, of nominations. Yeah. 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 They, like they Mon Monty Cook, uh, Paizo are very often uh, front runners in a lot of uh, any awards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any Paizo on this list though. Well, because Pathfinder Second Edition is not out yet. Right, mm. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so they've <laughs> been working on it. All. It well, well, I mean, we had a bunch well, of Starfinder supplements come out this year. Not, not a but, bunch, but a couple. Yeah, but like I think next year is when you're going to really see. I, I suspect that Pathfinder Second Edition is going to have a lot of representation in the eighties. Yeah. And there's a lot of year. categories that we don't have on here mm -hmm. too, so they could yep. be on there as well. Oh, but yeah, uh, another big note: old school revival games, OSR games. Huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Still getting bigger. Yeah. Still getting bigger. So it's, it's it's now it's more or less it's like people are saying, hey, okay, we recognize these games and they're, we don't consider them no longer just like 10-page D&D retro classic clones. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are their own being. They're their own entity. And we should acknowledge them for being that. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, another big name that has his like tendrils and a lot of different <laughs> tendrils. He, he, would, he, he would probably approve of that. He probably, yeah. yeah like I, I tendrils. think he would. Tendrils or tentacles? Yes. <laughs> I like tendricles. Ten, ten, tendricles. Tendricles. No, no, no. That, that sounds like but too yes. reproductive. Mm. Uh, Kenneth Haidt. Mm. Mm. Uh, so um, he he's known for a lot of like his podcasts mm -hmm. um, and a bunch of other stuff that, that uh, in influential designer. Yeah, I've, I've been a huge fan of his ever since like the Steve Jackson suppressed transmission, mm -hmm. where like every month or every week he would have some weird conspiracy theory, uh, like it just call him and yeah, like he's he's been fantastic for urban fantasy stuff. Mm. Yeah, and, and just being entertaining about mm -hmm. games mm. as well as uh, you know, yeah, so obviously designing some mm -hmm. really good ones. Somebody you might keep an eye on in case he like decides, oh hey, this project's notable. Then mm -hmm. you go, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yep, Ken Hyde is definitely someone to pay attention. Mm. Yes. So, do you remember when we, we started our briefing and we're like, we'll get through this pretty quick? Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not really going to happen. That's yeah. usually Great. It's all how lies. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All lies. All right. Yeah. Well, so, uh, the one other thing, kind of a side note I wanted to mention. It's not games, mm. but some of you may not have heard that Speaking Sandman is getting fantasy. its own Netflix series. Mm. Sandman. No, that's not. 
There's yeah. <laughs> Salt Man. Salt Man. Yeah, we'll see if there's like a really cheap spin up <laughs> called Salt Man. And he's just angry that he's not Sandman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm super excited. Sandman is one of my favorite stories. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of people's favorite story, mm. I think. Yeah. Uh, and Neil I, Gaiman, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Neil Gaiman. A lot of people have, who have never read it call it their favorite comic. Mm. So. Uh, well, now it's a chance for everybody to see it and maybe explore the comic. Uh, I'm really excited to see this come through. Mm -hmm. cool. Should yeah. be cool. All right. So now we move on to bundles. Bundles. Which I paid a lot of attention to this week. Mm. Great. <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't. Bundle of Holding has something called Colonial Gothic. If you're looking for a, uh, it's a role-playing setting, role-playing yes. game. Yep. That is uh, basically colonial fantasy. Uh, you know, Back in olden times, Revolutionary when, we were, War. when we were settlers, and yeah. you know, oh no, the dysentery monster. The dysentery monster yeah. is big. <laughs> the consumption beast has come and got me. Uh, but no, it's uh, it's about playing in the untamed mm -hmm. frontier. You know, uh, the, the nice parts of colonizing, along with some witches and monsters. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it's got a probably yeah. Here it says, if you enjoyed films like Last of the Mohicans, Revenant, or Black Robe. Okay, so it's definitely a horror setting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is definitely horror. It's super scary, and you're going to get mauled by a bear if you play this. It should be awesome. Mm. Survival <laughs> rate is but, seriously not high. Yeah. But, Bonzi, but you're wait. saying you don't necessarily have to play it as horror? No. Yeah. Mm. No, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, okay. got, it's got supplements specifically, so you don't have to. And, mm -hmm. again, it, it's just about that sense of mm -hmm. danger that comes with exploring an untamed, actual, yep. uncolonized wilderness. Mm. It's, it's that time of year where perhaps people might be interested in the dates of 1776 or so. Whoa. Oh. So if you want to play in that period of time, this is, I think, probably the most prominent game I've seen come you out You and your it. friends can be the next Donner Party. Mm. Yes. Um, oh, oh, God. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> so uh, this just got re-released using the new Zweihander, the D100 system, which mm -hmm. I am completely unfamiliar with, but it's going to be out at Gen Con next year. So if you uh, like the setting, there's plenty more to look forward to. For eight bucks, you're going to get the four core books, the GM screen, and the start of a campaign with a couple of little adventures attached. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get the bonus collection, which is normally $18, but on, this week is on sale for $17.76. Oh, no reason. No reason. <laughs> you will also get uh, the Fairyland supplement along with the- Well, the Fairyland's actually a whole other game, it seemed like. It, it was just kind of a weird mm, insertion. It seems like it's a, there. here's a bonus. Oh, look at that, it's a, a separate game of fairy tales and whimsy. Yeah. Well, because you like palette. fall through that rabbit hole, because mm -hmm. it's an Alice yep. in Wonderland city. <laughs> Yep, yep. We always know when she's doing it because There's she does this. It's like it's, like, it's the best tell ever. Uh, it's part of the language we've developed with her. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. No, uh, you gotta. We're already playing. I'm firing off the gun. It also yeah. comes with a colonial atlas, uh, a, a supplement to add Lovecraftian horror into your, into your other, horror into your already. otherwise <laughs> bleak and terrible setting. Yay. Uh, five setting books and yet another adventure. So mm -hmm. it sounds like a good deal. That's it for the bundles. Mm. All right. Now and with just moments to spare. Mm. Yep. We're going to kickstart the Kickstarters. Kick kick yep. kick so I crossed out all of them and <laughs> I just wrote Journey Quest 4. Oh, okay. W would you like to talk about Journey Quest 4? No, no, I'll talk about it at the end. How many days does it have left? Mm. Seven. seven. It's got days. seven more days left. Uh, what time on Friday does it end? I would imagine 9 p.m. That sounds, okay. that well, then maybe right. we can talk about it next week. Too. Oh, we absolutely will. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. oh. And I'll be live streaming about it okay. all day on Friday. So we can, we can put it off until next week. But do take a look at it. So. Uh, the first picture I want to cover has a, uh, a one day left, um, and this is uh, Dungeons and Delvers, the Red Book. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a, an expansion on the Black Book, which was this particular creator's kind of collection or re-examination of things that they loved th like through the history of D&D. Mm -hmm. Pulling a lot of stuff from Forth, like fixing Forth yeah. to take the stuff that they thought was good, but then take a lot of the uh, tone atmosphere, the stuff they thought was great from old D&D &D mm. and new D&D &D and put it out as kind of a very slim PDF. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this yeah, is yeah. the full expansion. Like somebody remade Gili into a good movie. Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so like, uh, but this is the full expansion into like 600 pages of content. Mm. Uh, and they, this uh, studio, like Awful Good Games, is on my radar mm. because uh, they did A Sundered World, which was a really, really good dungeon world setting mm -hmm. about kind of like a, a shattered world and like these little mo earth moats floating all around and stuff like that with this really like heavy line art or heavy black line art that was reminiscent of Mike Mignola and stuff like that. Okay. Really neat stuff. Uh, and I love people kind of re-examining and rebirthing 
D and D stuff to kind of pull what they like from different areas. Mm -hmm. So if you're the kind of person who likes to tinker with D and D rules, mm. check it out. Yep, and that's what the in the description of the Kickstarter, the mm -hmm. creator is saying. I like to change things. Yep. You like to change things. We can change things together. Yep. We. <laughs> the real friends were the change you made along the way. Yeah, everyone's oh. saying that. That's such a thing right now. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the next Kickstarter has three days left. Mm. Oh. Nice. This is Stalingrad Besieged, mm. which I think is a little bit of a uh, abstraction of a war game. So it's yeah. not mm. quite as detailed as a, as a war game might normally be. Yeah. Uh, you have these kind of channels that you send your troops down. Seems to really reinforce the meat grindery feel of that battle, yeah. mm. but also let you do it in about an hour or two yeah. hours. Under, for a war game, you know, mm -hmm. that's like... Yeah, which I think the people of Stalingrad would have appreciated back in the day. If they could have gotten it done in an hour or two yeah. hours. It's <laughs> just like, wow, we're on month what now? Yeah. Mm. I remember... The, anybody else freezing and starving? Mm. Oh, yes. P probably yes, everybody. Trench foot. Anywho. Mm. Uh, no, the interesting thing that I don't really get about this game is that they are offering a card version, a block version, and counter version. Well, not only are they offering it, like, they're all in the game. Like, it's not... Yeah. It doesn't seem like you pick which one. It's just... You get all three. <laughs> I'm not sure stuff. why they include all three. Yeah. Other than, clearly, there are some people who prefer one over the other. Mm. But I, I would go with the block version myself. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's also got, like, only a couple days left on mm -hmm. it. So maybe they started out with one version, and as they hit stretch mm. goals, sure. added the other ones sure. in there. That, that could be. So a lot yeah. of things do it, so. Well, yeah. it's an interesting thing, because, like, when you first learn the rules of a game, or if you're not int if you don't know too much about war games, like, mm -hmm. the cards have all the information there. But for someone who's like more experienced or just like knows what's going on, like you just use the things sure. and have the cards for reference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the other in interesting things were it includes a solo mode, mm -hmm. so you can kind of learn the game that way. But I just really did like the board. It actually takes an actual German map of <coughs> the city of Stalingrad and overlays the grid that you play on top. Yeah, of it. historical. Wait, map. You don't think that's lazy? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Uh, so, like, if, if you're into war games um, and you want some, and you, you're interested in something that's slightly abstract and that has some neat components, I think I'm just a sucker for uh, war games that use wooden blocks mm. instead of cardboard chits. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm just biased, mm. but I, I think it's pretty neat to check out. All right. So uh, there's also exploration with four days left, cool. and this is like not quite a 4x kind of game, mm. but you're playing a corporation who is trying to fulfill contracts, uh, you know, fulfill secret objectives, make money, sabotage your opponents to kind of be the first to get out into deep space and um, make a million money. Mm. I guess all my units. Make, all make, the make money all money. of the monies. Yep. <laughs> all the money units, yes. But mm. the, the really, aside from even just the, the different spaceship minis that looked pretty neat, mm -hmm. the thing that really intrigued me about it was the board had like uh, orbital vectors on it. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's an element of you can just spend a lot of energy if you just want to go from one planet to the other. But if you're willing to kind of take the longer route and do a little bit of kind of the you know, slingshot around the planet thing, you yeah. can save some energy, which was, you know, a, a nice subtle touch to kind of make this a little bit more of a realistic board In game. In this, yeah. you can play the space tortoise or the space hare. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next project is Eternal Adversary, oh. and with four days left, this is crowned the, the uh, Kickstarter board mm, game Kickstarter of board the game. week. Kickstarter Whee! board game! Mm -hmm. uh, and Christian, when I point at you, you know what to do. I do. Okay, so ahead. this is a game uh, from Sandy Peterson, from Peterson Games. They mm -hmm. brought you Cthulhu Wars. Mm. It has a bunch of really cool minis on a board. The story is that all other timelines have been destroyed. Mm. So a whole bunch of alternate Earths uh, all those heroes are now on one remaining Earth to defend it from the multivaried forces of chaos. So, <laughs> Christian, take it away. Have you tried this? What? I've never heard of it. <laughs> so, yes, uh, it, it very much seems to be channeling that same kind of element. I'm assuming that Christian is then going to back it. Yes. Oh, certainly. Uh, I, it, I it, also, it, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I felt like this game it made me kind of laugh because they kind of took uh, historical heroes and then put cybernetics on them. Yep. Yeah. Have you tried riffs? Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this, he's right at home here. Uh, there's The minis look really, really cool, which yeah. is not a surprise. Uh, I would love to just buy these minis separately. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it was also neat that like the, the map is kind of modular, and you can play like the last battle for all of universe happens in America mm. or Europe. <laughs> Which, <laughs> sure, okay, sure. that seems reasonable. I mean, but have you tried Rifts? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, not Rifts the board game. Uh, <coughs> speaking of 
older things coming back. Mm -hmm. With five days left, there's Earth Dawn Fourth Edition. I was surprised. The to Adip, see this. yeah, wasn't mm. it? Uh, the Adam's Journey Mystic Pass. So, to quickly go over what it is before we maybe kind of tangent off into Earth Dawn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it is uh, a collection of paths, uh, and what they're describing it as is societies or organizations that you can add your character to to add some more modifications or more customization to mm -hmm. them. Mm. So, you know, Earth Dawn was very heavy on like the the adept or the, the character class that you were, and there was a lot of culture in there built into the game, but they're adding these societies on top of that to help you modify that a little bit more. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I guess the storyline is still advancing. You know, Earth Dawn is an old, it's uh, more, a, it's than, more than It's flavor for your Earth Dawn campaign. Mm. Mm. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Earth Dawn is an old, nice. like, more than 25 years old uh, more RPG than, setting. More than yes. 30, right? I'm not sure. Something like that. Like, it's, time passes. It's, it's yeah, it, I don't even know yeah. anymore. Who, I'm, I'm yeah, not even sure how who old even I knows? am. Exactly. Um, so it's, it's nice to see this kind of coming back, but if you have been away for a little while, uh, or you're curious about it, $35 gets you all of the current PDFs, which mm -hmm. is particularly mm. noteworthy to yeah. jump back in. Everything that exists. And if you've never heard about Earth Dawn, uh, Earth Dawn is a kind of maybe sometimes uh, ancient history to Shadowrun, yes. right. for one. Uh, but it, it was a, a fantasy game where the, the shtick was is that effectively Lovecraftian horrors are invading reality, and so societies can't stop them. So mm -hmm. they decide to basically build nuclear fallout, fantasy nuclear fallout bunkers mm. to go live in until the Lovecraft monsters are done destroying the world, and then they'll come back out and try to reestablish society. Yes, and so they make Shadowrun. You know, Shadowrun happens like thousands of years later. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, this it's is like prehistoric the, the, so Shadowrun. So Shadowrun, the whole universe is like, no magic, magic, no magic, yep. magic. It's like yep. a wavelength. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that White Wolf game that uh, where you play like the Solars and the... Uh, uh, Exalted. 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 Mm -hmm. It's like Exalted meets He-Man meets D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. mm. So, like, you play in the setting where, you know, it's been a little while since these fallout shelters have been opened. Mm -hmm. Some open too early and are horrible hellscapes now. Mm. Some still haven't opened, so you might have one open up and have to deal with natives and stuff like that. Or, or, or people who don't know what's really going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, you know, you have kind of a relatively new fantasy setting, so you don't have these thousands of year old empires. Mm. You have you rediscovering a world that was ravaged by these horrible monsters. Mm. But it also had elements of like, everybody kind of could use magic. You couldn't necessarily cast spells, mm. but all of the classes could weave magical power into different things. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of detail in that setting and it was really intriguing, mm -hmm. but then it kind of disappeared for a while and now there's a new supplement, so. Yeah. The mechanics are really odd. Uh, they are, and yeah. this <laughs> is using the classic. Yeah, uh, the mechanics are very, very hard. That's what a lot of people. Yep. A lot of people had the problem with the game that it was a, it was just kind of hard to play. Is yeah. this the dice grid? Yeah. So this <laughs> is this is this is the step system <laughs> where like you know you would have a rating and you wouldn't just like roll a d twenty and add your modifier. <laughs> so what's You'd your have rating? A rating? Eight. You would so you okay. would find your rating of eight and then you would be like okay so to do an eight you roll like two d eight or it's a d eight plus a d four or mm -hmm. something like that. Two d eight and plus one d six minus one d four. And <laughs> eventually, what you realize is your step is what your average result should be for those dice. Mm -hmm. if, clever. If yes. you understand <laughs> averages. <Yes. laughs> Maybe yes. too clever. So it, it is in, in unique system, mm. is how I would say it. But <laughs> it was people just really want to do math. Mm -hmm. They do. Right. And I this is a, this is a great way do. to do that and <laughs> play a fantasy game. I feel like the only thing they missed out was calling this fourth world, mm. while sixth edition is sixth world. Yep. Mm. And then it would tie back into the history of mm. what this is. But I, I think technically they're not uh, they eventually broke the connection. I think like mm. they're not they're not technically related anymore. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. they were for a long time, and now they're like, now we're just not going to talk about that anymore. Oh, <laughs> so they're like the yes, our trolls look, look exactly like their trolls. Yep, <laughs> no <laughs> reason. Yes, our orcs look exactly it. like their orcs. No reason. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have horrors too, but they're not the same. Yeah. <laughs> we call so, them the same thing. Yeah. And they look the same. The next project has mm. five days left. This is X. Otis. It's oh. X dash Otis. Otis. X Otis. <laughs> Easy to look up. Rise of the Corruption. And that's quite a title. Mm. Mm. Sounds but like it was an algorithm, like the, yep. something yep. came <laughs> up with this name on a computer. Uh, generated Rise of the Corruption. Science yep. game. It's quite names. the title, but uh, I found the design really, really mm, endearing. Mm. Like, Mm. There's something about it that makes me really feel like it's got kind of um, a. It makes me feel like what sci fi was in the 80s, mm. but with a modern Jesus. kind of design and you know, more. 
We're going to avoid that one. <laughs> not the bad sci-fi. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not sorry. <laughs> uh, so, not so but it, sorry. how about this? Let's rephrase that. It makes me feel <coughs> the same way sci-fi did in the 80s. Hmm. You know, you are basically playing, uh, it's a cooperative game. You're playing like a fleet of ships that are using this technology from a lost alien civilization to find this ancient evil that that civilization sealed away and repair the seal before that evil is released. Mm -hmm. And the components are not, it's not a Kickstarter board game. It's a modular board, it's cooperative, you're exploring a galaxy, mm -hmm. but you're using you know, wooden tokens. There's mm. not miniatures, there's mm. not extravagant elements like that. So it kind of feels a little bit like classic board game, but the design is really clean and minimalistic, so it's mm. a little modern. But then there's also these nice uh, player boards for the different ships you can play. And that kind of harkens back a little bit to you know, the, the 80s sci-fi of like the covers you would see, the really cool ship designs that you'd see back then. Mm -hmm. mm. There's, a, uh, you know, mm. there's a lot of elements I think that come together pretty well here and I really like the way that this game looks. Um, there's a lot of neat stuff. Uh, it also you know, checks the other box for me where it actually comes with a box organizer that oh. fits everything and keeps it together properly. Oh, 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 uh, so it's just, it's really neat, it's really slick. If you want that kind of cooperative uh, galaxy exploration game mm -hmm. where each ship has a very distinct role, I think this is a really good Are they different alien races then? Or No, I, I don't think they're different races, they're okay. just different ships. Okay, cool. Because ah, okay. I was thinking, it reminded me a little bit about Star Control of sure. going around and like digging up artifacts. Mm. Oh. By the way, the next Kickstarter, I took that one. All right. Mm. Because, uh, hey, did you ever want to play Dungeon Keeper meets Blade in the Dark? Uh, that's what this mm. game is. I mean, I, I guess so. <laughs> yes. Well, but it, it's... You do I, now. I, I, like, I do. I like the whole idea that you're not heroes and that mm -hmm. you are the protectors of your goblin horde. Yeah. What's the name of the game? Oh, yeah. Wicked Ones. Mm. Sorry. Totally <laughs> forgot. It has <laughs> five days left. Um, so if you couldn't tell by the names, you are the Wicked Ones or the um, you are either this goblin race or... A uh, race of cave dwelling mm. creatures. You are the denizens of a dungeon. You are yes. the denizens yep. of a dungeon, and you got to keep those pesky, pesky adventurers from taking the loot that you rightfully stole. Right? Right, with their sharp <laughs> things and their <laughs> magic spells and their giant mm. backpacks. It's just jerks. This is rude, right? They're very Coming rude. To your dungeon, this is taking my your stuff. Yes. Uh, who, thinks it, who thinks about the goblins and their feelings? Well, apparently the Wicked Ones does. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, it was very intriguing. What yes. I liked is that it, it Blades in the Dark, if anybody's not familiar, is an indie RPG mm. where you play criminals and you decide what kind of criminal gang you are mm. and you kind of make the best fortune you can in this really harsh, weird, industrial city. Mm -hmm. uh, urban fantasy, perhaps. Mm. Um, For example. Yep. Yes. But so you pick what kind of gang you are. You know, are you smugglers? Are you assassins? Uh, you know, wh what is your racket, basically? <laughs> I'm a smug assassin. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so the, the <laughs> kind of neat trick here, and a lot of the Blades in the Dark inspired games <coughs> have figured out, like, what is the unifying group dynamic? Because mm. you basically have a character sheet for your group. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And the Wicked Ones, you choose what kind of dungeon you are. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to be a temple? Are you going to be a hideout? Are yes. you going to be... The uh, RPG system that uh, Crafty Games uses uh, reminds me of that a little bit. Oh, okay. Bit. Mm. Cool. When you, where you, where you, you, yes, you build individual characters, yep. but really you build your group. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, so the object of the game is you work to be more notorious and become more impenetrable. Mm. That's a hard <laughs> word. And it says here that you're attacked every four sessions. Yes. So that's interesting to have the combat mm -hmm. be so regimented, right? So you kind of know... There, I guess there might be things happening in between, but you know it's like, oh, it's building up. So you have that building I, I like the idea that you just sit around and do nothing for three <laughs> sessions <laughs> and then play on the fourth yep. one. You're just yep. going to the tavern, right? Nope. Just no, like, like you're, you're, you, you are going out doing your your dungeon stuff. You yeah. know? Like mm -hmm. the dungeon is is not just going to sit there waiting for adventurers. Right. Yeah. You know, the goblin, the reason the adventures are coming is because the goblins went out and raided. Mm. So now, you know, you're going out and trying to get all the resources you can to we need four, four new mimics for the treasure room. You're Come like building, you're role playing building a wall. It's sure. like, and then I put the bricks in here, and now we have a wall. It's probably not what it is, but if that's where you'd like to role play, then <laughs> you uh, really managed to make that game sound not fun. <laughs> so I think we figured out who doesn't have that special skill. <laughs> the, 
<laughs> Derek, tell me about this game so I want to okay, buy it again. Okay, great. There yeah. Is. So, you know, you go, like, the, the other interesting thing with, with that whole setup of, you know, every so often, you know, a wave of adventures are going to come. Mm -hmm. It also spe sounds like it's specifically designed to wrap up a full campaign in about 16 sessions. Mm, yes. So it feels like this is a very focused game. It's like, this is the story you're going to tell. <laughs> like, the rise and fall of this one particular dungeon, the stuff that it does to the area around it, uh, and then what adventure? What happens to the adventurers when they come and try to conquer you? Because mm. it's basically like it's if they attack every four sessions, you know you're going to have to well, do as much rebuilding can, and scrambling yep. as you possible. You can also think of this as the quiet year, the game that I discussed earlier. Yeah. Um, this is like, hey, you uh, you know something's probably going to happen, so you're like, all right. So last time the adventurers got through this door, mm -hmm. so let's put a trap there, mm. and then like poison dart all the like mm -hmm. spikes. <laughs> I like that. So, <laughs> so the huge golem that wakes up and tromps down mm -hmm. the hallway. Yeah. Oh, you but, mean you know, Phil? Oh, he only works here on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, see? So yeah. as long as the enemy is coming on Tuesday. Yeah. But, you know, Blades in the Dark is also a, a pretty uh, indie fiction-focused uh, system. It's inspired mm. or, or directly descendant from uh, Power by the Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. it'll be, I think there's a lot of it'll fun to area yep. to play. Yeah. So uh, yes. another Kickstarter is, uh, my wife is going to hate me for pronouncing <laughs> this, uh, die Macher, <laughs> die Macher, uh, die Macher. Probably. Yeah. Uh, this <laughs> is a six days left. It's a limited edition. Uh, die Macher is noteworthy as being the first uh, first board game actually entered into Board Game Geeks database. Ooh. So this is probably not going to come to retail. Uh, it is a classic game. It is a uh, thrilling game of leading your political party through the German democratic process. Oh, wow. So Does that sound fun? It's exciting. <laughs> uh, my, my skill might only apply to RPGs. Um, but this, this really seems like a really interesting artifact. This is a game I would mm. love to play. If you're a collector of, of board games, <coughs> you should probably check this out. Because again, first game entered in the database mm. from 1986, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1986. Yeah. This is a, a deluxe reprint. If you're the kind of person who likes to have board game history on their shelf, mm. you're going to want to check this out. And it's, or just really enjoys, you know, pretending to do German <laughs> politics. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. we, we've talked about in the past different ways in which people resurrect games or bring them back. In some cases, they'll make a lot of rules changes to mm -hmm. it and make like a completely new thing or they'll make small tweaks, but this looks like it really is just going to be a reprint. Mm -hmm. So if you played the game, if you enjoyed the game, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to play it. Uh, if there's good things, if there's issues like it, it is an older system right so it's mm -hmm. gonna play like a game from the 80s but right. check it out yeah, yeah. what's our last kickstarter the last minute kickstarter is monikers a serious nonsense with shut up and sit down mm. uh so basically it has seven days left uh basically <coughs> uh this is a card game where you try to develop the fastest in jokes you can yeah. <laughs> so people can understand you and it just game of nonsense you get decks you get like a 330 card deck mm -hmm. and uh, you pick certain cards like about five a deck of five cards mm. um and you try to go ahead and sub describe a sino um describe what that card represents um and like yeah you're, you're, yeah. you're trying to get your team it's a team-based game yes yeah. a team -based, um, sorry. and you're trying to get your team to guess what's on your card yes but you can't say that so yeah. if people have played the celebrity game it's very very similar uh, but this is kind of a like a geek curated thing, and instead of just everybody writing a piece, a name on a piece of paper and throwing it in the hat and hoping that everybody knows who that person is, right. yes, because that's one of the <laughs> I, I've encountered that a lot of times. Bless Excuse you again. Me. Sorry. Uh, so, but monikers, they they you know shut up and sit down, and, and the publishers made a deck of concepts, places, names, things has an explanation on it of what it is, yeah. so that even if you're not familiar with it, you can at least gibber something out. Mm. But in the first round, you can say anything other than the name. You just want people to guess that name. Um. And then in the second round, you can only get to say one thing. Yeah. And in the third round, you can't, can't say anything. So for like an example, you shall not pass. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gandalf. Gandalf. Yeah. And then you just go, pass. Mm -hmm. And then you can Gandalf. just, yeah. And then so you Gandalf. just. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> like, that yep, so you need to build those, mm. those uh, in jokes or those yeah. references. Yeah so that you can get your team to guess very quickly. Yeah, and the, uh, Monikers is very very pop culture. So mm -hmm. a lot of th these things are very referential to like memes. Mm -hmm. The original version came out a couple of years ago, I believe. Like five on years ago. Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So that was something, because I was looking through the cards uh, at Mox one day, and like this stuff, 
like is going to not be as well known because it's like pop culture that's like very internet mm -hmm. you know it's in the moment so yeah. to see this new set like the fire festival mm -hmm. was one of the cards mm -hmm. fire with a y right <laughs> so that's Sorry. like we're seeing like up to date like mm -hmm. modern hyper modern references and this, this oh is this yeah. is yeah. one of one of like the the best funniest <laughs> uh just party games yeah. so if you're looking for a party game uh it's something that's very accessible to a lot of people mm -hmm. check it out and yes. I think oh. that is it for our Kickstarter, oh. which means that uh, we're about at the end of the show. We are definitely at the end of the show, so yeah. we will be back next week. Don't forget about uh, don't stick around for the rundown with uh, Zulu board games coming mm -hmm. in today, right after the show, and uh, Brothers Murph on Mondays. Yep. Uh, Peter's still doing his firesides on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And we also we also have uh, Gen Con news on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Gen Con news on mm -hmm. Tuesdays. Yep. News days. News days. days. <laughs> news days. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you, uh, you know, Monday and Newsday and Wednesday and <laughs> Friday. I, mean, I think we need to find a show to put on Thursday now, too. That's okay. I, you know, I, I can help Filler you. Filler Thursday, <laughs> where it's just you staring So at that the was it for Table Takes presented by Gen Con. We will see you next week. I'm waving goodbye now. Mm. Au revoir. Bye. But if you don't remember, my name's Christian. This is Bonsai, Emma, and Derek. And, uh, yeah, we're here every week. See you next time.